All right, the last part of the law of conservation of momentum is momentum. So finally, we're getting to the actual physics of the situation. So the symbol for momentum is P, unfortunately. Um, I'm sorry about this. I didn't choose it, um, but it is you know always P. No one uses anything else other than P for momentum. Um, I guess M was taken for mass, but there are lots of other things that begin with P, so I don't really know why this was chosen. Okay, so what is momentum? Well, we simply define momentum, P, is equal to the mass of an object times its velocity. Okay, so that's it. Um, it is a vector quantity. Okay, whatever the direction of the velocity is, that's the direction of the momentum. Um, the units are just um, units of mass times units of velocity, so kilogram meters per second. There is no special name for that unit. Um, it's always just kilogram meters per second. Um, and one thing that's kind of interesting about this is that um, the momentum of an object depends on the reference frame. Um, that may seem obvious. We might expect most things to depend on the reference frame. The velocity depends on the reference frame. Okay, um, But remember that in various reference frames, the forces and accelerations were always the same. Um, as long as we were considering inertial reference frames, those parts came out the same. Momentum, while it is this conserved quantity, um, does not have that property. If you are considering different reference frames, you get a different, um, a different momentum. You'll see why that matters in a couple of videos. Um, okay, so you might wonder, why do we care about momentum? Like, what is the motivation behind this concept? So um, actually, there's a bit of a historical reason for this. So um, when Newton wrote down his laws, the original form of Newton's second law was the following. Um, so what he wrote down was the net force is equal to not mass times acceleration, but the derivative of the momentum. Okay, so um, if we take the derivative of momentum, that should come out to the same thing as mass times acceleration, because I'm claiming it's the same law. So let's check. Okay, well, if I put in the definition of momentum, then I've got d by dt of mass times velocity. Okay, and um, ordinarily, masses do not change. So um, we're taking as a given that mass is going to be conserved in all of the situations we're interested in. And so if mass is a constant for a given object, then we have mass times dv by dt, which of course is mass times acceleration. Okay, so we're assuming that mass is constant. Um, it turns out that if mass is not constant, then um, F equals ma is the right form to use. You always want to use that. But um, the original way that Newton wrote down this law was in terms of the momentum. Okay, so um, if the momentum is this thing that has you know, this very long history um, and it's worth studying because it is conserved, then that kind of explains why we're interested in this quantity. 